All right, I have a couple more things I want to cover from Chapter 2 that weren't covered in the last video. And the first topic relates to that of mortgages. And a mortgage is essentially is just a loan that people take out when they want to purchase a house. The house serves as collateral on the mortgage. So if you can't repay the loan and the bank has to foreclose on the house, they will sell that house and use the cash proceeds to pay off the loan. Right now, mortgage rates are about 4% for a 30-year mortgage. And unfortunately, a lot of people take out 30-year loans to purchase a house because taking a loan out and paying it off over 30 years instead of, let's say, 20 years or 15 years results in a much smaller monthly mortgage payment. And that's how people typically pay off their mortgage with monthly payments instead of, let's say, semi-annual payments or annual payments. So the 4% is an annual rate on a loan that's typically paid monthly. What I want to do is show you how much interest you'll pay over the life of the loan if you never make any early payments or late payments so you don't have to pay any penalties. And I'm not going to need you to know how to calculate this figure in terms of the monthly mortgage payment for the test, but it'll just be interesting for you to know for real life and to understand how much borrowing over such a lengthy time period hurts in terms of the total interest that you'll pay on a loan. I'm going to just use Excel's finance features to do the math. And again, the, uh, most of this math you won't need to do on the test. But um, let's say we're going to buy a house that costs three hundred thousand dollars. And oops, I didn't mean to do that. And I'm going to make a ten percent down payment. So, just again, getting Excel to serve as a giant calculator here. Ten percent times this 300,000 is 30,000 and then t the mortgage amount would be the difference between these two numbers the difference between what the house cost and the amount that I put down as the down payment so I'm going to take the 300,000 and subtract the 30,000 so let's find out our monthly mortgage payment Again, I'm just going to use Excel's finance functions to do this for me. The rate is going to be 4%, which is what rates are about right now, if you have a good credit score. That's quoted on an annual basis, but I need to convert it to a monthly basis by just dividing by 12 because I'm making monthly payments. My mortgage would be for 30 years, but because I'm making monthly payments, I'm actually going to make 360 total payments. My present value is the $270,000 mortgage amount. And then I don't need to enter any of the other va values or variables. So my monthly payment would be nearly $1,300. I'm going to make 360 of those. So what I want to do is calculate the total amount that I repaid the lender. I paid the lender about $1,300 a month, and I did that 360 times, 30 month years times 12 months. So I repaid the lender about $464,000. Of the $464,000, $270,000 was just repaying the amount borrowed. The rest was interest. So I'm going to take the total amount that I repaid the lender, subtract the amount borrowed, the 270. That gives me the total interest paid. So you can see it's pretty hefty. This only gets worse as rates go up. So what I'm going to do is paste the process down here, but I'm going to change the rate. So this was my 4% mortgage. I'm going to do it for a 5% mortgage. 
because the the worse your credit score is, your credit rating, the higher the rate you're going to pay on a loan. And so right now, rates are about 4% for those with good scores. If you have a worse score, you'd pay a higher rate. So I'm just going to pop this to 5% and I'm going to change this 4% to 5% in the formula. You can see that boosts our payment by what, about $150 a month? Over 360 months, it increases my total repaid by what, 40, 50, 60,000 ish dollars? Uh, this, I need to correct the formula on here to fix that. So, to calculate the to total interest paid, I'd take the total amount repaid to the lender, the 521,000, subtract the mortgage amount of 270,000. That will give me the total interest paid of about a quarter of a million dollars. So my interest paid is almost more than the mortgage amount if my rate's 5%. And I'm just going to pop this down here and do one more calculation. I actually remember a time when rates on mortgages was about 9%. So I'm going to switch this from 5% to 9% and watch what happens. And I'm going to change this as well. So if interest rates were 9%, which isn't unheard of, my monthly payment would be, I'm contrasting it to this monthly payment, so my monthly payment would be not almost a thousand dollars more a month, the difference being solely due to interest because I didn't boost the amount of money that I was borrowing. The total repaid to the lender $782,000, subtract the amount of the mortgage and your interest of over half a million dollars. So it really pays to do things right and have a good credit score because when you borrow money you can get it for cheaper than if you have a poor credit score, although um, these differences aren't necessarily due to just having a poor credit score. It could just be because interest rates, interest levels are rising. We have been in a nice period of low mortgage rates for some years now. It's questionable whether they will go any lower. I doubt they will. So about the only place they can go is up, which means the price of borrowing money becomes more expensive. I also want to talk about um, net versus gross income. So let's say you gross three thousand dollars you know over a few paychecks but you pay about twenty percent of your income in various taxes. That means you only net 80% of your income. So if you gross 3000 and you net 80%, I'm going to put a zero in front of that, so 0 0.8, that means you're only going to net $2,400. I could have done it another way. I could have said $3,000 times the amount that I pay in taxes, or 20%, is equal to 600 and then take 3000 and subtract the 600 to get the 2400 doing it this way to calculate the 2400 though is just a little bit quicker and so a lot of times I'll calculate net values by taking the gross amount of 3000 multiplying by 1 minus the tax rate 80 1 minus 20% to give me 0.8 and and that would give me my net income so let's say I actually have the desire to place $3,000 aside into an investment. You know, just for the sake of argument, let's say it's a certificate of deposit. So I want to place $3,000 into a CD. That means I have to gross more than $3,000 from my job to actually net $3,000 to have available to replace into a CD. So how much would I have to make or gross 
to net $3,000 to place into the CD. Well, to calculate that, I'm going to basically do this calculation. And actually, I'm going to copy this down. But instead of saying 3,000, I don't know that number. I don't know how much I would have to gross. Remember that take the amount you gross, multiply it by how much you'll net, 80%, and that gives you how much you net in dollars. So I don't know how much I'll have to gross, but I do know how much I want to net. I want to net 3,000 so that I can put it into that CD. So this is just a basic algebra equation. I'm going to rewrite it so it looks a little better. So it's, it's, it's x times 0.08, so I'm going to write it as, not 0 0.08, 0 0.8. So I'm going to write it as 0.8x equals $3,000. And then if you remember from algebra, if you divide both sides by 0 0.8, you'll get x on a side by itself. So I would have x equals 3,000 divided by 0 0.8. And so x equals 3,000 750. So if I take, just to check to make absolutely sure I'm right, if I take 3,750 and I multiply it by 20%, which is how much I owe in taxes, that should be $750 that I owe in taxes that my employer will deduct from my paycheck. Then I take that gross amount that I received, subtract what I owed in taxes, and that should give me my net amount which is $3,000. So what I'm trying to show you here is if you have an investment that costs a certain amount or if you have an account that you would like to place a certain amount of dollars in and you must pay taxes on those dollars before you put them into that account, then I'm showing you how to calculate how much you have to earn gross to generate X dollars after you pay taxes on it. Not every account requires that you pay taxes on money before you put the money into the account. For instance, I have at work a 403b plan and many employers offer 401k plans, which you may have heard of before. Um, those two types of accounts are tax deferred. That means the money that I put in those accounts, I don't pay taxes on before I put it into the account. A gross dollar is the same as a net dollar in terms of depositing money into those types of accounts up to a certain dollar amount. I don't pay taxes on that money until I start to withdraw it once I've retired. 